the environmental SIO Environmental Sustainability Task Force uh, meeting for June 2nd, 2022. Yahoo! So welcome to summer, everyone. Mm -hmm. And um, I, let's see, first item is the adoption of the agenda. Is there anyone that wants to add or alter the agenda in any way? Seeing no hands, uh, by um, vote of yay or nay, uh, we'll adopt the agenda. So all those in favor, please say yay. 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 Any yay. yay. <laughs> <laughs> Any opposed? No. I, I hear no opposed. Okay. We're moving forward. Communications and correspondence. Uh, we have uh, none to report. We have no presentation. So we'll move to public comment. Is there anyone from the public who's joining us that would like to say anything? We do have a, a second public comment at the end of the meeting. All right, thanks, Rob. Then we'll continue on. All right, C's team update. They're the ones that have been so busy. So welcome, Anna. And yeah, thank you. Should I launch in, Jim? No, please do. Sweet. Yeah. So my team members wanted to be here, but everyone had plans. I think uh, things are ramping up for folks this summer, but I'm here. Um, so we compiled some updates for y'all. Um, kind of some main ones are that we're making final edits to the survey and interview questions right now using all the great feedback that we've gotten from all of you and our faculty advisor. Um, so that's going really well. And we're starting to get those survey questions onto the surveying platform as we're finalizing them. Um, and then we actually have interviews already scheduled for next week. So Alicia and Kyle will be interviewing Transportation Alternatives Planning Committee and the Downtown Development Authority. And then Zoe and I will be attending the Parks and Recreation monthly meeting and we'll kind of be presenting on um, what we've been working on and have a little bit of a group discussion about um, relevant goals and actions and, and get some folks um, thoughts on those goals. Um, and then um, I guess going back to the surveys too. So the plan is to have the survey ready to go by next week in time for the Ann Arbor Green Fair, which I believe is on the 10th, I wanna say. Um, so Kyle and Zoe will be there. So they welcome you to come over and check out the table um, and all that good stuff. And then um, also Zoe and Kyle submitted the write-up for the SIO newsletter. So that is all set. Um, so those are really our main updates. Um, I'm thinking, unless anyone has any comments or anything they or questions or anything like that um we could go to reviewing the engagement plan so y'all can see kind of what um zoe and kyle have planned for distributing the survey for getting feedback through um, what we're calling focus groups they're really just kind of presentations and group discussions and then those interviews with different stakeholder groups so if if folks feel ready to go there, we can we can head on over to that document. Um, I believe there's a link to the agenda. Jan, I don't know if you'd like to maybe share your screen or if you'd like me to share my screen. What what do you think would work best? Um, you know what? So I can keep the agenda up. If you share your screen, that would probably sure. be good. Thanks. Yeah, I can do that. Great. Thanks. Absolutely. Okay. All right, can everyone see my screen? Mm -hmm. Looks yep. good. Awesome. Okay, so I will just preface by saying that strategy, so I'm not as familiar as they would be with it, but I have seen it before and, and we've all had discussions around these items. Um, so just that little disclaimer, I guess. 
Um, I'd start well, off by saying there's, I think yeah. there's one thing, I don't know how many people are taking it, but there is a course that the U of M is offering on community engagement. And I think two of you are Zoe and oh. a couple of people taking that course and applying, yeah. directly applying what they're learning um, with this. Mm -hmm. So I think that yeah. that was fortuitous. Yeah, yeah. So we found um, like an online community engagement um, course. I think it's like a six week course or something. And yeah, so Zoe and Kyle have been working on that. Um, I also personally have quite a bit of community engagement experience. So I've been kind of um, helping them with with these strategies as well, based on my own experience um, in my professional backgrounds. Um, but that being said, as I'm going through, we really welcome any other ideas any of you all have um, that you would like to add to this plan, any um, ideas for like survey distribution. Um, I think some of the main ones we were really looking for to was if, um, if you have a look, you don't need to do this now, but if you have a look at the homeowners association list, and if you think any are missing from that list, if you could either add those if you have editing access or if you can just email Jan or email our group email with um, the name of that owner's associ association. So we make sure that we're being as comprehensive as possible. Um, that would be great. Okay, so those are kind of some, some bits of feedback that, that we'll be looking for. So if you think of anything, please let me know, stop me jump in um, and I can add those as notes onto this plan. Okay, so Kyle and Zoe did a really good job of breaking this down. So they kind of broke it down as in-person strategies, um, virtual strategies, and then um, some facilitation methods. So just notes on best practices for each of these um, different methods that we're using here. So our three methods, um, which I think we've covered before, are the surveys, which you've all seen um, the draft of that now, the stakeholder interviews, so thinking back to those list of questions, and then focus groups, um, which to explain those, once again, they're really, they're not going to be like super formal. Um, I think they're going to be more of like a, a sort of a presentation and then discussion format with different groups. So for example, um, at like a homeowners association meeting, one or two members of our team would go to that meeting, provide a little bit of a presentation on um, relevant goals and strategies, and then have a discussion around those goals and strategies with folks in that group. So those are the three methods here. Um, so kind of the main in-person are tabling at events. So as I mentioned, if I'll scroll down and we'll see all the events that uh, Kyle and Zoe have compiled. But so tabling at those events like the Green Fair and then um, potentially distributing uh, QR codes of the surveys. I, I don't think this is necessary, necessarily as much of a um, priority for us because I, I don't think we get as, as much uh, traction. Um, but that's another one, too. Um, stakeholder interviews, obviously, some, some of them might be happening in person, some of them will be happening virtually, that just depends on what the stakeholders are most comfortable with, and then um, those in-person homeowners associations meetings um, are a possibility too, but those could also be virtual. Um, so those are kind of those in-person. In and then looking at virtual outreach strategies for the surveys. So the survey link will be shared in the newsletter. Um, and I guess to explain that too, um, so because we haven't finalized the survey yet, we couldn't necessarily like put a link to that finalized survey, you know? So our plan is to link to the task force webpage and on the web page, we'll provide a link to that survey. So that's a way for us to just make sure that we're um, providing that finalized link and it's all um, a good process there. Okay, so then another piece, which is I think kind of where you all come in is distributing the survey through stakeholders. So 
whatever ties any of you have to different organizations, homeowners associations, faith-based organizations, um, as much as you can really push the survey link out once that's ready to go, we really, really appreciate that. So we can really get it through all those different networks in SIO. Um, as I mentioned, it will go on the website for sure. It will go on SIO Township's current Facebook page. Um, we have discussed creating a new, this should say group, Facebook group. That is something I would love to discuss with you all. I think I'll circle back once we've gone through this whole plan um, because it's something we're kind of on the fence on. So we'd love your input on that. Um, we are considering potentially creating sort of like um, a digital media sharing guide or package. I think that's another Thing that I would actually love your feedback on right now. Um, so I guess in my past public engagement and outreach work, a lot of the organizations that I've worked with have like an online, a pretty significant online presence. So maybe they have some social media accounts, they have like um, an email list, that sort of thing. And so when we're asking other organizations to share, say, a survey or an event or something like that, it's really useful to provide them with just some pre-written language, some pre-written graphics, so it makes it really easy for them to share that information. And so we've considered doing this, but um, we're unsure if there are really like a ton of organizations within SIO that would have an online presence and if that would really make sense to take the time to create that. So I'm curious what you think, Jan. I'm curious of what anyone else might think about that. Feel free to jump in or we can circle back. Um, one thing that, you know, and this has been very effective with the A20 group, what they did is they created a, um, I think they call them collaborators. And mm -hmm. so um, you can sign on as an A20 collaborator and you can be any organization um, within the city of Ann Arbor, some of them are even outside the city of Ann Arbor. So what mm -hmm. they did is then have uh, basically quarterly updates with what's going on, how and trying to connect people who are interested in environmental sustainability and uh, carbon neutrality together. Um, and then they have, you know, like eight to zero week, they had a whole media package that went out to each of those organizations that they could send on and make it easy. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think they've used it very effectively. Um, and perhaps as we reach out to people, you know, certainly it could be done with the HOAs um, and, you know, other kind of key people, the DDA, you know, the different committees and so forth. Um, I know, Pam, you have your newsletter. Um, so there, we might, you know, identify some key collaborators, uh, you know, within the township, you know, 242 mm -hmm. Church is huge. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many members actually live in the township, but, um, you know, uh, it has a possibility, I guess. Okay. One of the issues is after you guys go away, <laughs> we have to figure out how to maintain yeah. some of this stuff. So, um, but, but certainly that might be also um, as we meet more people and get the word out, there might be some uh, folks that are really, um, you know, into media that would be willing to volunteer um, to be, mm. you know, that kind of, that would be their, you know, kind of contribution to, um, the, the, uh, engagement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. And uh, that's definitely something to consider as we're thinking about ongoing engagement too, once, um, us master students move on, but we know this will continue. Um, that's really helpful. Did anyone else want to chime in on that at all? Okay, cool. Um, I actually do think I'm going to go ahead and talk about this Facebook group. I think this kind of 
is super relevant to what we're talking about right now. So I think, yeah, let's, let's chat about it now a little bit. Um, so to explain this a little bit more, the idea with the Facebook group is that it would be specifically around SIO sustainability um, initiatives, basically. Um, and the benefit with a group versus a page is that a group, um, and I apologize if you already know this, but I might as well explain it just in case um, you don't necessarily know that difference. Um, but a group is a little bit more interactive. It's more of feels like a community space where different people can post things. Um, so it's 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 a space where there can be a little bit more dialogue back and forth, whereas generally a page is more of um, it's Sio Township just like putting out news to other people and there isn't as much dialogue, I guess. And so I think we see a lot of benefit in having more of that dialogue online um, in an online space. Of course, there are pros and cons to that. Um, I mean, thinking about how you would need to have someone moderating that page. Um, yeah, did you want to chime in, Bob? Got it? Okay, Th cool. That's what I was going to ask. Who was going to yeah, be the moderator? Exactly. Because I like the idea, but it would, it would need a moderator. Yeah, right, exactly. And I mean, while those moderators could be some of us master students, we don't want to necessarily, um, we want to be thinking about the longevity of that of that group. Um, and I, I know that the township has limited resources and all, all of you have limited time. Um, yeah. But perhaps you could start off uh, being some, one of you or more than one of you being the moderators and then we could take over later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that is, if that's something you feel that like a uh, would be an appropriate role for the task force or like you would be happy to do, then I think we could move forward with it. Um, it also might be a good opportunity for someone who's, you know, doesn't have gray hair <laughs> um, to participate, you know, in, in the whole uh, sustainability process too. So maybe we need to put, you know, an ad out, um, it, you know, just all of us are volunteers and that might be an opportunity, you know, both from a, you know, social networking kind of thing and uh, a, a media, t a, a media type person, you know, mm -hmm. you know, might be really interested in, in um, helping us out that way. Um, and I think it's important to somehow tie it to the Sio Township website that I think Christy um, uh, posts things on right now, it, just so that it isn't totally independent, but it's referenced there too. Mm -hmm. There might be um, some other groups, you know, that, that might want to do that at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, um, in my previous role, I was a volunteer coordinator and actually we did exactly that where we, um, I put the word out for some like social media volunteers and actually that was really successful. Um, and we found that worked really well. Um, they need, like a little bit of, I guess, like leadership, but I think the task force could probably provide that. Um, so that could be a really good idea to pursue that, to um, have maybe a long-term, a longer term volunteer take on that role. Um, I guess also another thing worth mentioning is like, we're, so we were kind of leaning towards like, let's create it because it, it doesn't actually take that much work to create a Facebook group. And I think in our mind, um, even if for some reason the task force didn't have the capacity to continue um, moderating this group or something and it, and it had to be like shut down at some point, I think at least it would be a temporary space that there could be a lot of dialogue as we're creating this first iteration of the plan. Um, so I think there are benefits either way. And, and ultimately, I think it sounds like we're, we're leaning towards let's create it and see what we can do with it. Um, and if it lives on, that's wonderful. And if it doesn't, at least it served a pretty good purpose while it's around. Does that, does that sound good to, to folks? Yeah, Garrett brought up a, a good point is, you know, making sure okay. you have the guidelines, you know, mm -hmm. um, for, for the group. Yeah, I'm just, my thought is, uh, if you're going to have a moderator, what are they moderating toward or what are, mm -hmm. what are the 
guidelines they're following that protects both the users also protects the moderator if you got good guidelines mm -hmm. so they take clear direction and yeah. it also protect the township as well mm -hmm. you know Hate to think of all the legal issues sometimes. Right. No, it's that's really good to to cover our butts. That's important. Um, so I think maybe what we could do is draft up those rules or guidelines and then share that with the task force beforehand and make sure that it looks good to everyone. So so we're making sure that everyone's on the same page and feeling good about that. And, and we can run it through the trustees, you know, just, sure. um, you know, informally and mm -hmm. see if anybody thinks we need to. Yeah, exactly. Just so we make sure we're not creating things that get everybody become Absolutely. an issue later on. Yeah. But, okay. I, you know, I, I agree. And one of the bad things about Facebook is there are, you know, definitely a segment of the population that have abandoned it. But um, I think as long as we're using multiple uh, outreach strategies, that's mm -hmm. certainly helpful. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, everyone, for um, that input. Um, we will definitely, I think we'll move forward then and, and um, we'll be in touch with some more details about that soon, too. Um, okay, and then the final um, kind of um, digital outreach strategy is creating an email list. Um, so that's something that we can start building. It's It might be possible to get it on the website. I think it'd be really cool if we could get like, a, like an email sign up form on the website. We'll also have an option towards the end of the survey for people to go to like a separate link so that it's still anonymous. And then in that separate link, they can provide their email address and opt in for future updates. Um, and we'll also have um, a sign up sheet at the tabling events as well. And so just for folks who want to opt in, who want to um, get updates about the plan, that's an option for them. Um, okay. And so, one thing I did find out is that we yeah. do have that option for signups and all those sorts of things within the township website. But oh, okay. the issue is um, we don't have anyone that is has the training or um, the time sort of assigned or whatever to be able mm -hmm. to do that. So okay. that may be, you know, I'm, I'm continuing to try and discuss that both with the township administrator um, and just, you know, because there could be a lot of good things that we did because some mm -hmm. of the, uh, one of the things that we, you know, we keep running into is um, a lot of our information can be linked to websites, information, and all these things. And the newsletter, because it's print, mm -hmm. we're having to use QR codes or, mm -hmm. you know, just re re refer everyone to the uh, sustainability website. Mm -hmm. um, portion uh you know dig down into the the SIO website so um it, it doesn't allow quite as much um uh if you will you, you know interactiveness um yeah yeah so and you know more you could get uh you know people outside of SIO also might be interested in in um yeah you know, getting those updates too. So anyway, uh, I think it, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of potential here and I hope we can, you know, kind of step up the community engagement mm -hmm. and communications um, through some of these strategies. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think the nice thing is too, like in my experience, like <laughs> I, you know, I've worked for a, a, a very small, like kind of grassroots movement. So we often had to take kind of the cheapest, lowest resource um, path, which is, Good experience to have, you know, because, you know, we, we have limited resources here in this situation, too. So, I mean, another option here is just provide a link to a very basic Google form where people can sign up. So that's a really good way to sidestep all this, like, tricky website stuff. Um, so I, I think we could do something like that so that it doesn't get too complicated. I will note that here. Okay. 
Anna. Yeah. Would the um, simple sign up Google sheet, would that uh, be anonymous? Would it be, you wouldn't have the whole list available to anybody who went to it, would you? No. So Good. what we could do, um, there are lots of different options, but we could have basically um, what you can do with a Google form is you, um, you'd have like a place for them to put in their name if they want to, their email address, and maybe they have any other comments or something. And then what you can do in Google Drive is basically create like a Google Sheet that populates as you get those responses. And then you can set the privacy settings on that Google Sheet for whatever, you know, whatever you'd want to. So it could be fully restricted to just like our internal team, whatever, whatever the task force decides essentially. But it, it certainly, I think it's something that would not be um, a publicly available list because, you know, we don't, we want to make sure that uh, right. no right. one feels that their privacy is violated. Right? Great. Glad it could be done. Yeah, I can make a note of that too. Let's see. Okay, sign up on this Google sheet. Oh, that's <laughs> <a good laughs> <else> here. <laughs> No, that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think that's something that we could um, explicitly put on the form too, that your email address will not be shared with, with the public or with anyone other than our internal team. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, so looking through some of this other stuff, virtual outreach, um, I mean, these things are, are, I think, are things we've talked about before. A lot of this is just reaching out to stakeholders via email, which we've already started doing, reaching out to homeowners associations via email, um, collecting emails, yeah, um, so those are really the main ones. And I think, you know, as we meet with more stakeholders, one thing we really want to make a point of doing is continuing to ask the question, is there anyone else we should be talking to? Is there any other organization or individual we should know about? So we're continually like expanded, expanding that network and making sure it's um, comprehensive. So that's kind of what we're covering here. Um, and this stuff is really just kind of best practices for how we're doing these things. Um, and you've seen all these questions and stuff, so you should have a good idea. Oh, um, it is worth mentioning though. So with the, um, focus groups, we're calling them, um, I think we'll be basing, we'll be not, I think we will be basing those discussion questions off of the um, interview questions as well. So, you know, you will have, you've had a chance to review those interview questions. So a lot of those discussion questions are gonna be pretty consistent with the interview questions with slight um, edits based on like who we're talking to essentially. So that is the plan with those. Um, okay, so all of this is really just kind of how we're gonna be doing the tabling. So um, providing the QR code to the survey, collecting emails. Um, and I think what we'll do is we'll provide an option for people uh, at tabling events, provide an option for them to e either take the survey there if they'd like to, but of course not everyone wants to stand for 10 minutes and take a survey in a public space like that. So they'll also have an option to provide their email and for us to send them that survey so they can kind of do that on their own time and with some more privacy and peace. Um, yeah, those are kind of the main pieces. I know that Zoe and Kyle have had some discussions around um, different ways to like engage people at those events and get them like kind of draw them over to the table. So we've discussed having like um, a big like kind of poster board or like sheet of paper that has 
um, a prompt that people can then like answer. So maybe something like, uh, like what ideas do you have for sustainability initiatives in your neighborhood or your community? And then people can write down on that. Um, so there's a few different, um, pretty straightforward ways of, of collecting information and getting people a little bit more engaged at the tables in that way. Um, if anyone has like certain activity ideas or anything like that, please share them with our team. Like, I think that Zoe and Kyle are really going to be like experimenting with different ideas as they're at these events. So if you can think of anything, please share them. Um, here, we just have kind of what we would include for the Facebook group, um, plus all those great discussion items that we just had. Um, so yeah, I would provide the Facebook group. Um, we would provide just background on what we're doing, why we're doing it, um, the task force, the working groups, you know, all that good stuff, maybe a little bit of timeline as well. So folks have that adequate amount of background information. It would be a way to distribute the survey. It would be a way to share the events that we'll be tabling at. Um, and also ways to um, update people on the progress that we're all making. Um, do we have an idea of how long, like, I think the thought was we're doing, this is sort of the major survey, and then mm -hmm. there might be some follow-ups. Do you have a, I'm wondering if we have a, you know, a deadline so that people know when that survey is going to close, or are, is it yeah. going to be open-ended? Yeah, um, so we've discussed this a little bit. I think we want to keep it a little bit flexible because um, you know, I think some of it will depend. I think as we're um, as the survey is active for the, kind of this first round of distribution, we'll be sort of monitoring um, the demographics and seeing how like representative of um, survey respondents we're getting. So. We've, we've um, put together kind of a spreadsheet that gives us an idea of like township demographics. And with the demographics on the survey, um, those questions are really important because they help us understand are the people who are responding to the survey representing the entirety of Sayo Township. And so I think a lot of it will be dependent on um, how representative of a sample we're getting and as we're kind of monitoring that, that will help inform like our distribution strategies. And so, um, for example, um, like if there's a certain age group that we're missing, we might try to like target certain organizations that would cater more to that age group. So that would be one example. Or if um, there's a certain area in SIO where we're really not getting any respondents, we'll, we would maybe um, finds a library or a business or like a, a public space to table in and distribute surveys in that area so that we're making sure that we're reaching those folks. Um, so I know that's not like a super straightforward answer. I think the general plan right now is once we finalize a survey next week, we'll take about a month of pretty intensive distribution. And then we'll probably, and, and we will, I think, be monitoring the responses at that point just to kind of adjust and inform as we go and then i think what we'll do is probably take like a few weeks pause of distribution but i think we'll still keep the survey link active at that point so that we don't um i think the survey link will stay active so that as you know people might trickle in and stuff even if we're not actively distributing um just so they still have the opportunity to do that um, but that's just like a few of those weeks is really just an opportunity for our team to do a little bit more like in-depth analysis of, okay, who, who are we getting? Who are we missing? Um, we'll probably do a, a check-in, a more in-depth check-in with all you working groups too, and make sure that the information we've been getting is actually useful to you. And if you have any thoughts on like, if there's other information that's really crucial so it's like a little uncertain at this point, I think just because we're gonna have to see how, how things go, you know? Um, so that's a plan. We'll probably take a little bit of a pause in um, like mid July 
And then I think we'll start back up um, a little bit like more actively and deliberately in August and try to um, fill in those gaps, both in um, our respondents and in any like information that we're missing. Does that answer your question, Jan? Yeah, that sounds good because I think most okay. people won't get the newsletter until like, you know, after the 1st of July. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think, yeah, trying to reach people before that is a, is a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, so, because I, I think more if, you know, everyone, if everyone on the, the task force, every commission member, every committee member sends it out to their network, that's more of a personal ask as opposed mm -hmm. to, hey, read the newsletter, here's a QR code, please go and fill out a survey. So I think, um, I, I hope people here will encourage um, everybody who has any kind of um, volunteer or um, employee role, whatever, uh, appoint, uh, elected role, uh, to really reach out to mm -hmm. um, their networks within the, the township. Yeah, absolutely. I guess I would put it this way, like in a perfect world, we wouldn't have to do a second round of distribution. So um, I think as much as we can try to reach as many people as possible, this first round, the better. And then we'll try to fill in the gaps later, knowing that we don't live in a perfect world. So that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of the plan. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, cool. And yeah, so this stakeholder distribution is exactly what um, Dan is getting at here, is, is reaching out to these networks. Um, and that's really what we can use all of your help with. Um, I yes. think I kind of... So yeah. Dana, you're on for the farmers. So can you, can you <laughs> figure out how we can host uh, uh, at least one or more farmer events? Yeah, Dana, Excuse you have me. I, I was half asleep there. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> no worries. Or you want to, uh, uh, your question was, how can we host a farmer event? Yeah. How do we get, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can distribute the survey to farmers, but I, I think it'd be interesting to bring them together and, and do some, like a focus group uh, mm -hmm. discussion too. And whether or not, you know, are all the farmers networked? Are there multiple farmer groups? You know, it'd be good to be able to identify those because we're not going to reach folks that, I mean, in the subdivisions and so forth, it's a little easier where they have, you know, homeowners associations or condo associations or, you know, internal newsletters or whatever. But, you know, f uh, you know, the onesie twosies of, of farmers out there, um, it's, it's a little harder to reach. Well, I'm a little bit tardy on uh, on working on this, Jan. So I'll I'll uh, do some due diligence and uh, have a better response for you here in the next meeting. Yeah, no, I, and I guess work with you know, kind of think through what might work. You know, I, don't I, I need to I need to talk to a few of the yeah, farmers and then and, exactly. and we'll build it from there. So exactly, perfect. That's what we need. Yeah, because uh, anyone else, um, I think the DDA is, you know, one business community, but there are other business, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, businesses outside of the DDA too, to, to try and reach. Um, Absolutely. And I think, you know, something like that could be as simple as like renting a community space. Um, and I think that's something where, Jan, maybe you could help guide Kyle and Zoe with what kind what type of you know public spaces that they could use and just rent a community space um get folks there which it sounds like Dana could help with that and then give a presentation have some discussion um I, I don't think it needs to be super complicated but it does sound like it's very important and we do have the township hall that we can use the meeting hall anytime we want sure. well awesome. not anytime we want but I mean that that's certainly available but I was thinking you know would Wing Farm want to host something or you know, one oh, of the yeah. other ones, you know, Tim might want to host one too. Um, and yeah. And those of you that live in neighborhoods that don't have associations, um, you know, do you have a summer picnic event or would you be willing to, you know, um, just get, have a gathering in your backyard to um, talk about things with, 
with your neighbors. So think about, uh, you know, if, if you don't have a, an organized neighborhood, how, you know, it, cause it's the, it's really uh, the personal outreach that will engage more people. Mm-hmm. I have high hopes. I'm optimistic. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think really the key is um, as much as possible connecting with events, however small that are already happening in communities, you know, small communities, neighborhoods, groups of neighbors that are already meeting up and connected. So as much as we can do that, the better. Um, and like I said, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. I think it, it could be a situation where one or two of our team members show up. We just talk to some folks and we maybe provide them with a survey, ask them some questions. Um, so yes. Yes. Okay. So I think those are really the main pieces. Um, this section is just us compiling all the materials we need to create for, for mostly tabling and any other um, in-person stuff. And then we also, um, Zoe and Kyle have compiled a list of events that um, they will be present at. So this is another piece where we could use everyone's help. Um, if anything is missing from here that you know about, um, we would love to add those to the list. And it's okay if it, they don't need to be in June. Um, if they're in July, that's totally fine. If they're in August, that's great. Anything throughout the summer. Um, yeah, so if, if you think of anything, I'm guessing you don't have anything off the top of your head now, but if you think of anything, shoot us an email. Um, I think you're muted, Jan. Yeah, I am. What's not on here is the June 11th um, Jackson Road. I think they're planning on doing something there. Um, uh, what is it? The Jackson Road? What is that? The cruise. Yeah. In the road cruise? Yeah. Yeah, Kyle said they are going to cover the cruise. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um. I will make a note to them just to make sure that they see this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they're, they, I think they were planning on that. And then we were trying to um, coordinate the, uh, the township, township has been doing some coffee hours on Saturdays. And we were thinking pairing that with one of the home toxic event Saturdays, um, maybe we could um, in, include, um, you know, grab a few more people. Um, we'll see. I haven't, I, I want to touch base and see, okay. um, if those have been, you know, successful at all. Okay. I will make and a so note. the other ones were the, um, ongoing, um, um, little, uh, walks or hikes in the preserves. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. I will add those two. The first Saturday walks. Yeah, you can walk and talk. I lo that sounds awesome. <laughs> sounds like a pretty good time to me. In parks, okay. I will make sure that they see this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then I think Charlie, you were looking at something that maybe you got you guys could do in Sale Farms too. I might have said something. Somebody, I think, asked me about an event there. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, they used to do these uh, midsummer kind of community picnic-like things mm -hmm. at the clubhouse. But between COVID and rebuilding the clubhouse, they had uh, ceased doing those. I haven't heard anything about them doing one this summer. I'll ask about it. But my feeling is if they were, I probably would have heard about it by now. Mm, okay. But I'll find out. So if they well, don't. Maybe you I can push they, them to do it. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. I can always try to do some persuasion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for that. Um, anything else anyone can think of right now off the top of their head? Okay. Cool. Yeah, and everything else here is really just this wonderful timeline um, or deadlines, I guess, that, that Zoe and Kyle have created to make sure they're on track. Um, and also just making sure that we're tracking different stakeholder meetings so we can do 
um, what Zoe and I will be doing next week, which is um, connecting with those stakeholders, seeing if we can get even like 15 minutes of their meeting so we can share some information with the full group. Um, yeah, so that's that's really the engagement plan. Um, I guess I can wrap up on this unless anyone has any kind of like lingering thoughts or questions. Okay. Cool. So I will stop sharing. I'm just going to double check um, that I covered any of the questions that we had for all of you or um, points of discussion. But yeah, so we chatted about different distribution methods. We talked about the Facebook group. Um, I mentioned, yeah, if any HOAs are missing from that list, you can add them. Um, and also we talked about events. Okay, cool. I think that I've covered everything that we had on our list. Um, so yeah, we can, we can move on. Okay, great. Yeah, I just wanted to mention we'll be working with the team um, to and Mary Gillis at uh, the township. And by the time the at the end of the month, uh, we will have a kind of a full uh, website update for the sustain the task force. So it'll have um, you know, more information, links to things, um, including like a carbon footprint calculator and the survey and it, that and it, that type of thing. So um, uh, hopefully we'll get all that done. So that's kind of what's happening on that end. So if you do have something, if the working groups have some some specific resources or um ideas that they would like to have on the website. Um, you can send them to me or, or send them to actually just send them to the SIO core team. <laughs> um, and, you know, that then they can kind of curate that and we can work with Mary um, to get that update done. All right. So I think with that, we'll move on to. Yeah, sorry, Dan, I just, I just have yeah, one Chris. So the, the transportation group has a bunch of like, very specific suggestions for potential content that could go on the website that we outlined in our like transportation group proposal. So if if you're on board with those suggestions, then then we'll start working on them and developing the content for the website that we proposed. Yeah, I think what we're what we're thinking about doing the purpose of the whole survey is to get feedback from the community on the things that the working group of been doing and sort of where people are and, you know, supporting those things and so forth. Um, but I know um, some of those things about that, you know, we are, the planning commission is moving forward with an EV charging ordinance. Um, and um, I know that the township's looking at, you know, the EV charging for their piece too. Right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm strictly talking about um, uh -huh. just like, potential content for the website, not, oh, okay. not, not other informational uh, resources, what you're thinking. Yeah, it's yes. all education. Absolutely. Stuff. Yep, absolutely. That's what we want to do. And there may be ways that we can put it in different categories too. So people can go. Um, yeah, the educational stuff for the website is perfect. That's exactly what we're after. So thanks awesome. for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Yep. Okay. Then um, the next order of business is um, looking at the carbon neutrality resolution. So um, let's see, Kathy, do you want to um, do you want to share what you've got and kind of walk us through that? You're on mute. Um, honestly, every time I've tried to share something, it has not worked. It would okay. be better if you could do it. <laughs> I can, I think I can do that. Hang on. Okay, how's that? Yep. That works. All right. So, yeah, I don't know if you want to take a minute to read through it if you haven't already. Um, it's 
basically it's roughly the same length and the same kinds of things that a number of other communities have used. Um, you go, the whereas clauses all have to do with, this is kind of evidence, this is why we're doing what we're doing. So the whole start with why thing. And then um, the um, resolved clauses all have to do with what we are pledging ourselves to go forward and do as a township mm -hmm. about it. It does not get into how we're going to do it at all. It's just sort of, these are the big picture directions we're taking. Um, I Everything here, everything on here, um, the idea was taken from one or more other communities, similar resolutions. So this is nothing original, put it that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I would just, you know, by the end of 2022, I would give us to the first quarter of 2023. Okay. Just, yeah. Okay. I just went with the movie. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I, I think that would, that would be helpful. And that's, that would coincide with the end of the, um, our, um, C's team too. And I, I just think, you know, and the county will have theirs, their draft out in the fall, I think. And so yeah. it'll help us kind of dovetail those efforts. I think, I think that's probably a little more, I feel, I feel like we can meet that at the end of yeah. 2022 yeah. and might be rushing it. Um, what about I, one question I had when I was writing it, I just put with continued revisions at five year intervals, because that seems to be what everybody is saying. Does that, mm -hmm. that's reasonable. I think that's very reasonable. Okay. Yeah, because there's some whole big shift things that could happen that change strategies and so forth. And I right. think that the Ann Arbor had the, you know, the concept of the A20 plan being a living plan, you know, and if there's a way to, you know, use that terminology here, I think that's, that's, that's true. But the, the five-year interval is, is a pretty typical one for plans. Yeah. yeah. And I have to say, you guys did a great job on this because I think one of the things, it's very straightforward. A lot of them get into, a, a, um, a, you know, kind of a, you can tell it, a lot of special interest groups have added A, B, C, and D, and this just seems to be, you know, um, it, it's an English and it hits. Yeah, the, I want to second uh, Jan's comment there. I thought this, you did an excellent job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Way to go, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Any anyone have any other? So I think just, you know, by the first quarter of Fix it. Okay. Is, is is the only thing I I was <laughs> getting so, heart palpitations on that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this my understanding is next this would go to planning commission. Right. And the planning commission would then say recommend approval to the trustees. To trustees. Okay. Yep. And our next planning commission meeting is uh, we can get this on the agenda um, because it is uh, the uh, 13th of June. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Nope. Well, Anything else? No. <laughs> Kathy, that was great. <laughs> okay, thank you. I mean, after looking at all of them and what you guys put together and what you know you specifically put together, um, yeah, I, I think you made it you made it township specific and yet you brought in some of the big picture items. So globally and you're right. <clears throat> and without the fluff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had I had a major plan that was looking like it was going to go to three or four pages. And yeah, I thought maybe <laughs> we might want to cut that back a little bit. Yeah. If you start writing it too long, people start to lose interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice job. 
All right. Yeah. I'm excited. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Um, with that, we'll uh, open up public comment. All right, Rob, I have see your hand first. I know. I, I felt it in the last week. Huh? I felt it in the Okay, that I think that's a great um addition. Yeah, you've got that down, Anna. I see you nodding. Yeah. All right, Pam. Yes, I'm going to actually uh, show my face here. Um, I want to thank all of you um, for bringing up the farms. And one of the things that I am committed to do in the newsletter this year is to highlight as many farmers, small cottage farmers, um, um, because I feel that with our food supply issues, it, it is such a problem and um, the, we need a list of local farmers. You know, even the lady down the street on South Zeeb Road that has eggs, um, you know, I'm reaching out to her um, that I, so if anybody has a suggestion, please email me. Um, I'd love to highlight them in the newsletter. Thank you. That's great. Thanks. I hope you're keeping track too. Cause I, I am. Um, I started keeping track of each of uh, who I've, I've um, highlighted and the newsletter it was in um, and um, so that there's always a running list and, and you can go back to the newsletter. So. Oh, great. Yeah. That's, that's neat. Yeah. Cause I think there are a lot of people that, you know, uh, you know, sh sh who have, you know, can shop there or do CSAs or whatever. You know, we have, there, there are a lot of nice options. So. All right. All right, I think that's our, our two publics. Uh -oh. All right, then uh, just moving on to the approval of the minutes of our uh, main meeting. Did anyone have any additions or revisions to those minutes? Rob. <laughs> I can't get the link to work. <laughs> oh, is it may I wonder if um when I copied it, I wonder if all of it oh come on. You may have to copy it and um yeah and put it in your browser because it, it it may have gotten chopped up when it got posted. I'm I'm seeing when I click on it, the whole thing doesn't come up. Oh or, I see it all. it does. Oh there I, I did oh. get I can I can share it if that's easier to do. Okay. Um, oh yeah, we haven't put the video link in there. We have to do that. Mm, okay, Dan, share. Yeah, I think we just have to add the video link. Correct. And that may be because I couldn't get to it. <laughs> now it's in my PC chair uh, account, so I can get to all the links. Okay. I don't want to make anybody sick by rolling too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I move acceptance with the video link added. Okay, great. Is there a second? Support. Okay, support for Charlie. Um, any other discussion? All right. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. And the, those will be our minutes with the video link added. And I, um, Kathy, uh, we may have to wait. Uh, I think Christy's back. 
um, Monday because um, she's the one that has access to that link. So we'll have to email her. Okay. Then uh, anyone have any um, announcements? Well, I'm going to put Jeff on the spot here and and uh, let him uh, brag a little bit, Jeff. Oh, Charlie! Oh, this was unexpected. <laughs> I had to I put you on the spot. Set it properly. This is worth mentioning. Okay, well, it's it's a real mouthful, so now I got to pull it up. <laughs> um, let's see. I got this. This was actually something that I should have got in 2020, but, you know, COVID and all that. Okay, here we go. This is from uh, Isabella Garamani at, at Washtenaw.org. It is a pleasure for us to revisit and properly celebrate your 2020 Washtenaw County Master Composter in Edu Leadership and Education Award. You were selected to receive this award by the Washtenaw County Water Resources Commissioner's Office for your et cetera, et cetera. Basically, it's based on the event work that I do and I'm still doing, recycling and composting at running events. So I'm going to get this belated award. All right. Everybody has to unmute. I want lots of applause. <laughs> Yay. Yay, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, if you want to see me in action, I will be working the Island Lake Triathlon on Saturday in Brighton at Island Lake State Rec Area and more close, closer to home, I will be working the finish line at the Dexter and Arbor Run. Very cool. All right. Um, I want to invite everyone to the um, look at the A20 events. They have um, a whole week of events. It's on um, their website, Ann Arbor. You just do A20 week if you Google that. Um, specifically, the Mayor's Green Fair is on Friday um, the 10th. It's a great, fun kind of event downtown Ann Arbor. Um, the uh, SIO team is going to be tabling with the, uh, thank you, um, with the Ann Arbor 2030 district. Um, the other uh, announcement is um, we got bids today and we'll be reviewing them tomorrow and awarding um, the, um, the energy audit for the Township Hall recommended um, replacing um, a lot of lights with LEDs and some commissioning work. And um, so we got an Eagle Grant to do that. So that works moving forward. It'll be done by the end of July, boom, boom. Um, so that's kind of fun. And we'll be able to then measure the, uh, the progress. Um, yeah, and if um, any of you want, uh, I think the, the link will be available, but Washtenaw Dairy, the 2030 district worked with Washtenaw Dairy and uh, they, uh, they didn't completely they didn't completely electrify, but they did move to heat pumps for a lot of their heating. They added a 40 kilowatt um, solar array, and um, they ended up reducing their greenhouse gas emissions by almost 30 percent. Um, Bravo! Yeah, yeah, and so they were. Um, uh, one of the solar stories uh, tonight, and that'll be recorded. So um, we do have, I mean, that's just a really little, <laughs> you know, um, um, you know, and what's neat is because in the 2030 district, you benchmark your buildings, you can actually see those changes, um, both in your greenhouse gas emissions and your um, total energy use. So um, we'll be tracking that with the township. So, you know, it's, it's, you can actually, you can see the change. You can actually measure the change. So I'm excited about that. Any other announcements? All right. Then with that, I think we can, you know, it's not even dark out yet. Yes. Let's uh, enjoy a little bit more of the evening and uh, thank everyone for um, the feedback on the surveys. And um, I just have to say, I'm just so impressed with this team. And, you know, if you think where we would be without the C's team, uh, you know, 
um, it, it, you've multiplied our efforts by probably a hundred. So uh, thank you so much. Sincerely appreciate it. Yep. All right. Okay. So in, enjoy um, the Friday and a glorious weekend. So thanks so much. Thank you, Jan. Thanks. thanks. Uh, Take bye, care. Everybody. Thank, thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Recording stopped.